how to paint my bathroom floor tiles. Now, if you're new to my channel, you've probably entered very similar words into the search engine of YouTube and you're binge watching videos just like this one right now. So if you wanna see how I took these gray dirty tiles and turned it into how this looks, then I urge you to stick around because I'm gonna take you through my recipe step by step on how to use chalk paint to paint your bathroom floor tiles. Now I've been painting with chalk paint for a decade now and I really trust in how this is gonna last, but I will be doing a six months video and a year on to see how well my bathroom floor tiles last. But I'm pretty confident that my recipe really is gonna be the recipe for you. So let's get stuck in to this renovation. So one of the jobs I have done off camera is pre-cut all of my baseboards or skirting boards if you're in the UK. And what you can see here, I'm removing them now and numbering the back of each one so I know which position they will go in once the tiled floor has been painted. This is also a good shout so that you can paint all of the baseboards prior to putting them back into the room. If you study the lower left hand side of the screen, you will see that my wall tiles have a thin plastic strip running through the outward corners which makes for a nice clean connection in tiling. The floor tiles on the two steps have the same thing in black. I've decided to give the plastic a light key sand ahead of my primer coat. Whilst we're on the subject of sanding, I have watched one or two YouTube tutorials which suggest using an electric sander on your ceramic tiles to key before painting. This is something that I would not suggest to do. Ceramic tiles are made with si silica, which is a glass particle. And should you take a sander, that's going to be in the environment that you're gonna be working in. It is not going to be good for your lungs. Should you choose to do that, then I would suggest that you need a really good respirator ahead of your preparation. So all I'm gonna do now is let you watch me really give this floor a good old clean ahead of my primer coat. So that's the first part of the process complete. And I would say cleaning your tiles is one of the most crucial steps in the whole process. Should you have anything oily, greasy or dirty, that could affect uh, the layers of paint that you're gonna pop over the top. Which leads me to uh, explain a little bit about my tile and the tile that you might be working on in your own bathroom at home. These are ceramic tiles, um, they are faux slate look and to feel them they've got almost, I don't know if you can hear that, like a crunchy, almost like a sandy feel. The previous owner chose these obviously as a non-slip tile for the bathroom which is a great shout for me right now because chalk paint absolutely loves um, a rough surface and it also loves natural stone. So if you've got travertine, um, a natural stone tile, it will really grip well to that surface. You must remove any um, 
top coat that you might have on that surface though. So should you have a sealer, then you really need to clean that sealer away before using your chalk paint. Having said that, I am going to be using a primer because this is um, basically a glass tile. Silica is what's in a ceramic tile. These tiles have the same. These are a much smoother tile. You may have a smoother tile at home. So yes, you will need a primer if you've got a smoother tile. So what primer to use? Um, I'm in the UK and this is one of my favorite products. This is PX4 and it's made by Crown. It's a stain blocking primer, but it is a super adhesion primer. You can paint glass, you can paint PVC. I painted my windows on the outside and painted over with a water-based paint and they're still looking great after five years. Um, another thing that I thought I might bring up at this point as well, and some of you guys might have this in your space, the previous owner did such a good job of the tiling and this overall space. They sealed in, corked around the edge with silicone um, to make sure this bathroom was nice and watertight. Um, that's one thing that all paints do not like, whether you're using an oil-based paint or a, a latex paint or even um, water-based, like we're using chalk paint uh, today, it really doesn't like that paint does not stick to that surface. So there's two things that you could do at this point. You could go around with a blade and chop all of that away, paint your floor and then re-cork it afterwards. But in my case, you may have seen at the beginning of the video, I've pre-cut some um, baseboards that are going around the whole room, which will clear the um, silicone on the edge. So I don't need to worry about the silicone because the board is so thick, it's not going to be anywhere near that silicone. So that's one thing to think about when you're doing your project. Um, anything else that you might need to know? Not at this stage, but as I'm working through the project, I'm sure things will come to, to mind as I'm working on this. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a roller tray. I've got some of my Annie, Annie Sloan sponge rollers. I will be using a sponge roller and a brush. So the brush is there to um, go around the edges and into the grout lines. And then I'll be using the roller just to roll over a nice, thin, even coat. It will look kind of translucent. I'm not gonna to do two coats of the primer. One will be enough. And then when we hit the chalk paint, the same again. It'd probably take three coats because it's gonna be nearly white. Um, but thin coats, build your layers up slowly rather than trying to cover everything in, in one go. So wish me luck, let's get on with starting to apply the primer.
I'm now day two of this project. I decided to leave my primer coat to dry overnight, although this is actually touch dry in one hour, but I wanted to give it a full 24 hours of curing before we start the chalk painted treatment to the surface. One of the other things that I decided to do was give this little plastic trim on the edge of these steps a second coat. So after that hour had passed, I went back over with my roller. If there's gonna be any issues with these tiles, it probably won't be the actual tile, it will be the plastic trim on the step. So uh, belt and braces again, I went in with a second coat. Um, it's just one of those things. I could find another trim to go over the top, but I just think it'll look so much better all painted out. So we'll see how that weathers over the next six months to a year. I promise you I will come back and revisit this so you can see how well it did. Um, now I've got to choose my base coat. I've already done a sample of this. You may have seen it in one of the videos earlier on in my bathroom makeover. If you haven't seen those videos, um, I will link in to the description below episode one and you can follow them through right the way up to this stage and beyond. Um, but the colour that I'm going for is a colour mix. Now, if you're painting your floor at home, I probably would say don't go with a colour mix, go with a colour straight from the can so that you can touch up at a later date the same shade. But I'm going to do a recipe and I'm going to share that with you, but that's only for my own benefit because when I need to mix this colour again, if it needs touching up, I can follow my own video. I'm hoping it won't need to. Plus the fact I'm going to save the can and I'm going to put my colour mix back into the can and save a little bit of paint um, to one side should I need to do any repairs, but I will report if there's any repairs to be made. So I'm going with Old White with a mix of Country Grey. Old White is a great colour, but I just found it was a bit too stark in the space, so we're gonna just warm it up with a little bit of Country Grey. So let's head back downstairs and we can mix the overall colour to start covering up the tiles with a brand new look. Okay, so I've got a old food bucket that I'm gonna mix this into. I've got Old White. Annie Sloan Old White, a brand new can, and Country Grey, which I'm not gonna be using too much of the Country Grey, but we'll measure that out in the jug. So in with, I've given this a good shake before I started. There we go. And we'll give it a stir as well. I'm gonna be using a jug to measure this out. So we're going to need quite a lot of this paint. I don't want to be mixing um, again. So that is one pint of paint. I'm also going to be adding about 5% water to this paint, just so I've got the freedom with the roller. You won't need to add much more than 5%. So the full can's going in. It's about two pints, I think, to one litre. What I will do off camera is wash this um, container out, this tin out, once I've removed all the paint. So I've got a nice clean vessel to pop my paint back into once I've completed whatever's left over will go back in this can and be sealed shut. Get everything out. So where does that lie? 
Oh yeah, we're up the pint. Make sure we get everything out. So basically one litre, but in my measuring vessel, it's two pints. Right, what I've done here is scraped the edge of the measuring jug because I'm going to add about um, a quarter of a pint of country grey and that should be just about right in my shade. Final thing is my 5% water, which I'm just gonna guesstimate. This shouldn't really change the overall color that I've mixed. I'm just gonna use it to clean out the jug. we go again exactly the same as the primer coat working the edges and the grout lines with a brush then into the roller
I'm now day three of the tile, bathroom tile makeover. Um, I did stay up late last night to give this a second coat and I wasn't too sure in the artificial light whether it would be good coverage this morning. And I've walked in and it looks absolutely sublime. It is solid, solid coverage. So there are a couple of things that I want to go through with you, the stencil choice and also what you could do at this stage because stenciling on chalk paint can be a bit tricky. You need to keep your surface super clean um, and if you spill the contrasting color that you're using, it can be a little bit awkward. So what you could do at this point is you will need to take another day over it, but you could lacquer the whole surface, your base coat, you can lacquer the whole room and leave that to dry overnight and then when it comes to your stencil pattern the next day you just go over the top of that because chalk paint will go over lacquer and should you have a mishap at that stage you can just erase it with a damp cloth and start again so that might be something for you I'm not going to work like that I'm going straight onto the chalk paint I'm going to be super careful I've got the paint for touch-ups Touch-ups can be tricky, you need to feather them away so that you don't have anything that shows through at the end once lacquered. Stencil pattern, your uh, scale of your tile is really important that you make sure if you're doing a full stencil pattern that you get the exact right measurements of your tile because it can run out over, um, over each tile. If you start in a corner and then start coming forward, you might end up going over if the pattern is slightly larger. My stencil is inspired by a visit, well I say a visit, I was working with Annie Sloan on her stand at Chelsea. So I was walking through a um, greenhouse at the Chelsea Flower Show and I looked down and I saw some tiles on the floor and I took a picture, which you can see just now, of it was kind of muddy so the effect on the tile it was because it was muddy from people walking through but nevertheless the design and the pattern I absolutely loved and I really wanted to recreate the same in the bathroom so what I've done is I've had a stencil made I've hand drawn a very similar pattern it is very close to the original so unfortunately this uh, stencil will never be available to you guys with any of the companies that I'm affiliated with but what I want to do because I've kind of um, been inspired by that wonderful tile I will link in the company to the original tiles in my description box so that if you are retiling and you want to buy that tile then go and find them they're reasonably priced at six pound a tile and I think for a caustic tile like that it is absolutely a bargain so here's the stencil itself it's just a simple little pattern that I've drawn out I've done it slightly different in scale to the originals um, and how it works it's just going to go in each corner so that it creates almost like a little snowflake effect on each corner of each tile I'm going to be mixing another colour, I'm going to be using graphite and chateau grey for this colour mix. I'm not going to do that on camera but I will make a note for myself for touch-ups. I will make extra paint, put it in a little jar just in case um, and then we can get stuck in with the stenciling. So I've got to pop a towel on the floor, I'm going to start where the bath should be so I can get comfortable. If I have a little mishap there then that doesn't matter. So let's get cracking with stenciling.
Oh yes, this stencil design did take quite a long while. Four stencils per tile, making sure that I waited for each pattern to dry before moving on to the next section of pattern. So the basic principles of stenciling, there are a couple of methods that you could use. You could use a foam roller to apply your paint through your stencil. If you notice on my stencil, I've used some decorator's tape on two sides of the stencil just to steady up my pattern when I'm using my stencil brush. The stencil brush is definitely my preferred method. Um, when I'm using it on furniture, I sometimes use a swirly um, motion with the brush, but in this case, on the floor tiles, I've used a stipple action, which makes for a nice, clean cut. As you can see, I'm working from my towel, and I've also got a little bit of shop rag to one side, which is where I'm offloading some of the paint from the brush to prevent getting bleed through. If you apply a lot of paint on your stipple motion, you're likely to push paint underneath the stencil and you won't get as clean a look to your finish. So that's about it for stenciling. I'm hoping you're loving the design. Here's a finished view of how it looks at this stage. Okay, so I won't lie to you, it is kind of back-breaking work. This is, took another full day of hard work with the stencil. I just wanted to show you one of the stencils that I cut. This is the one that I've used round the edges. So I just made a measurement. I measured the gap between the two patterns and then measured again, cut off the excess, and I cut a little notch out of one side, which gave me where the grout line was, so everything is in line. So that little notch is where the grout line ends because there's no corner to work from. So that's what I did there. The other thing that I wanted to address at this stage, probably my bag, I have definitely chose too dark a colour, I think, for the design, but once you're in it, you're in it till the end, I suppose. I could stencil over it again, but no way. It does look a little bit 101 Dalmatians to me, but I've got a solution for that. So my solution for that is I've got to touch up one or two little areas on the white um, because I've just kind of put my finger there or whatever. There's just one or two little marks, but I've got a really large um, bristle, natural bristle brush with the white on the surface. And what I'm gonna do is offload the paint and I'm gonna dry brush just slightly over where all those lovely little dimples from the stippling effect, they're just gonna be highlighted. So I'm gonna use this really gently over the top, a little bit like applying blusher, um, just to add a smokiness to each one of these patterns. I've already done this tile where the bath was gonna be as a practice run and I really like the look. So I'm gonna go over the whole floor, just adding this smoky, hazy, and this is just the same color as what I've done everywhere else, which also will allow me to clean the tiles, make sure there's no hair, debris, anything on these ready for sealing the surface with my matte lacquer, which I cannot wait to get to because then I know it's all safe and secure ready for finishing off with the um, skirting boards to go around the bottom, which needs to be painted in Annie Sloan satin paint, and then another good couple of coats, and this floor should be just about done. So I'm gonna go on with this hazy, smoky feel on, on each one of these patterns. Looks really good, really happy. The final hurdle is just about in sight. The floor has had a really good amount of drying time. It's got quite late here now, but I want to get this first coat of 
Annie Sloan Matte Lacquer. This is how it looks. It is a water-based product. It also comes in a gloss version. The finish is entirely up to you. A couple of other things that I might mention. I will be using the foam roller once again. But if you've got a stencil design like mine, which is quite contrasty in tone, so almost black and white, this first pass, you need to have a real light touch and not too much agitation. Don't keep on rolling over the same area too long because it's a water-based product. It could reactivate some of the pigment in the black and move over to the white. So just be mindful of that. The other thing that I've got is my brush that I use for my dry brushing. This is really here so that I can sweep away any debris, any loose hairs, fluff, particles that might be on the floor because once the lacquer goes on, that um, dirt or hair will be trapped in between forever and that will really annoy you. So make sure you've got a clean surface to work from. Well, that's just about the whole process complete. All that's left to do now is leave this one coat of lacquer to dry overnight. And then tomorrow morning, I can go back in with another couple of coats to make sure that I've got full protection across the whole bathroom floor. Then I'll go back in and add my skirting boards back to the room for a nice clean finish. And not to forget, the bathtub has to go back into the space. Can you guess which colour I painted it? Stick around for the end result shots so you can see the whole room just about finished. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, hit me with a like, comment, or even better, feel free to subscribe.